What's going on engineers? It's time for the very first code review on the Engineer Man YouTube channel. Today we're reviewing the tank game, which was sent in by a viewer a couple weeks ago who requested that I not name him. I want everybody to know though, if you send in your code for review and you want to send in your Facebook page or YouTube channel or Google Plus, Twitter, or whatever you want, I'm, I'm happy to put it up for you in return for letting me review your code. So let's have a look and see what we got. So the author sent the tank game in in two files. One was tankgame.py, which was what appears to be the kind of the control flow for the whole game. But then he sent in also tank.py, which is a class to represent one tank. And you can see those being used here. This file was just a class tank, and, and in general I thought it was very well put together. It used a lot of the elements you know, for Python classes. I thought that was cool. Basically the tank is supposed to represent a, a tank who has a name who is either alive or not alive, who has a certain amount of ammo and a certain amount of armor. Basically tanks can shoot other tanks and that reduces their armor and they can shoot a certain number of times as denoted by ammo. So he sets those up here in this initialization. He also created a function so if you use the string function on the tank instance it returns some information about it. So in this case if the tank's alive it says the name and how much armor and the shells Oh, actually, I think this is a problem right here. So I think he meant to do percentage i there, because that's not actually going to work. Let me just check that. Yeah, one two three, one two three. Name, armor, ammo. Yep. So that was just a typo he made, real quick. So additionally, in this file, there's three other methods. You know, the tank to fire at the enemy, the tank that takes a hit, and then a tank that explodes once it gets hit and it has no more armor. In general, again, I'm not seeing that many issues, so I, I think it's well put together. Back to the original tank game file, one problem I did come across is I wasn't really sure if this was a Python 2 or 3 program because I saw a lot of these prints with the parentheses. And when I ran it as, as Python 2, of course, it was showing these as, as tuples because that's what happens when you, when you print you know, parentheses with a number of items in it. So, of course, next thing I did is I tried to run it with Python 3 and it didn't work because there were a couple problems. As soon as I saw the raw input, which I, I missed at first, raw input is a function that's just in Python 2. In Python 3, they've renamed it to just input. So by seeing raw input, I, I know 100% for sure that the author intended this to be ran on Python 2. However, when I run it as Python 2, I get some, I get some weird behavior right off the bat. You know, for instance, I, I get this. And of course, there's still a tuple here. So I don't think that's what the author intended. So we're going to look at why it's happening and, and how to fix it. So the first thing I notice is he's, he's laying out each tank in a, in a dictionary. And he's using keys A, B, and C. I, I wasn't sure why he did that. I, I thought, I thought a, a list would have been more appropriate, but it, it occurred to me that when you go to play the game, you have to, you have to specify which tank is doing what to what other tank. And his intent was to say, you know, who fires, and you would, you would type A, B, and C and then who at, and then you would pick, you know, if you picked A, you could pick B or C, and so on. So that would mean that you'd need a way to reference that. There would be a way to accomplish that with an array, except in that case, you'd have to actually write Alice or Bob or Carol. But it, it certainly is possible. It, it's fine just the way it is, though. So the control flow seems fairly simple. He, he counts the alive tanks, which in, in, in the beginning, of course, is all of them. And then... While there's more than one alive tank, keep keep playing the game. So the first thing it does is it just prints the status for all the tanks. And then it asks who's firing at who. So in this case, you would say, you know, A is firing at B, for instance. And then it writes out Alice fires on Bob, Bob is hit. And then it just loops over again. So before I go any further, I want to actually fix this. I, I believe the author meant that to read the actual tank name and all the information. So he, he made the method for it, which is here, string method. But rather than using the string function, he just sort of put tanks tank name. So I'm just going to wrap that in string. And then that should fix that problem. And it does. You can see now the A tank is Alice, 60 armor, 5 shells, and, and so on. So that, that's probably what the author had intended that do. So once you fire upon somebody else, he, he does a check here to make sure you actually specify a, a real tank. If you were to type, say, A and then D, it would error. However, one thing it doesn't check is you can actually fire on yourself. So if I do A and then A, it says Alice fires on Alice, Alice is hit. 
This could be fixed pretty easy by just adding a check down here, basically if first equals second. You know, then just say you cannot attack yourself and then continue. And that should correct that problem. And it just loops over and has no effect on anybody's stats. So it also does another check as well. If you attack a tank who is already dead, it does not allow you to do that. So that's good. And then finally, if all is well, it actually proceeds to attack. So first tank fire at second tank. And then it just says that if the second tank is, is not alive anymore, basically you, you dealt the killing blow on that tank, then simply decrement the alive tanks. Then finally, when there's only one tank left, it, it leaves this while loop. And then it does this final loop down here for tank and tanks.values. If tank.alice, no, not Alice. I think he meant that to be alive. Small typo there. Then it outputs tank name is the winner. So let's actually go ahead and play the game. See how it works. So we'll do Alice attacks Bob. Carol attacks Bob. Alice attacks Bob again. So Bob is now dead. Alice attacks Carol. Alice attacks Carol. And then we'll deal the final blow. Done. So it says C is the winner, but C of course is not the winner. Alice is the winner. And I was trying to figure out why that was. If, if you look at tank name, the only reference to tank name is up here. So what's happening is when it does that initial loop, tank name is keeping the the reference to this last tank because that was the last one to be you know to be printed out just print out in order and then this is reusing it here so rather than tank name i believe what the author wanted was string tank so the only modification i'd make now at this point is there's there's a lot of tuples here and it just kind of looks kind of weird i don't think it was ever intended for it to be you know quote alice quote comma quote is hit quote and that's just because Python 3 requires parentheses for your print statement. Python 2 does not. If you specify them, it's treated like a tuple. So we can correct this by simply changing all these to just print, just deleting the parentheses. And then we could do the same on the tank.py side. So this is probably the way the author had originally intended. So a fires at B, Alice fires on Bob, Bob is hit, great, A fires on B, A fires on B, Bob is dead, C fires on A, C fires on A, C fires on A, and Carol's the winner. I think this program is really good now. It looks good. That's, that is all the changes I think I would make to it. So all in all, everything I found was, was pretty minor. And plus, when the author sent in his code, he, he did self-describe himself as a beginner. And so if I take that into account as well, I, I thought this was really great work, you know, for a beginner. And that's the end of the code review. If you would like to send in your code for code review, use the email right there. It's codereview at engineerman.org. And also let me know if you want some sort of shout out as well. And also let me know if it is yours or something you found in the internet. This is the first video on my channel that's like this, so let me know in the comments down below how you liked it, and if you'd like to see more or any suggestions you might have for this, this sort of format. And that's it. See you in the next video.